Today, we're told there's yet another technical fiddle that's supposed to help make power more available and more affordable. But which, like just about everything else that's been done since the carbon tax was abolished, will only make our long-term problems worse, not better. The various energy regulators have got together to propose a new system of demand management, which they claim will supposedly reward big electricity users for scaling back their usage at times of peak demand. Now, that's an Orwellian doublespeak for scheduled outages, where industry basically stops consuming power so that the system doesn't end up in blackout. The problem say the architects of this new regulation, is that our peak demand is too high. Wrong. And they couldn't be more wrong. Because the problem is not that demand is too high, the problem is that the supply is too low. With our population ever increasing and insatiable growth in the sort of devices that we now require, power to operate 24-7, it's no surprise that our electricity needs are on the increase. A key requirement in a modern grid, therefore, is to model the projected demand increases and make sure we grow our generation to meet them. Put simply, with more and more people wanting to do more and more with power, we need to make more electricity, not less. And that shouldn't be hard, considering we've got some of the world's largest supplies of gas, coal and uranium. But instead of getting more baseload power into the system, the people running it, the managers and regulators, take further emissions reduction for granted. So they're trying to reduce demand rather than increase supply. And by flooding our grid with heavily subsidised solar and wind power, they've made it more expensive and more unreliable. Let's just call this demand management announced today what it is. It's power rationing. And it should worry every Australian who wants to see the standard of living we enjoy today increased, or at the very least, maintained. Now, why do I say that? Because as a country, we need to make power to make things. We need it for our industries. We need it for jobs. We also need power and fossil fuels for our farmers to farm. We say we want to be the food bowl for Asia. The PM today, well, he said he wants to make agriculture a $100 billion industry within a decade. But for that, we need reliable and affordable power. I'm from the country and as yet I've never seen an electric tractor or a header run on a battery pack or an irrigation system that doesn't need power. So let's stop the green madness and start thinking about where Australia is headed, how we create jobs in the future and where we think we're going to get our wealth from. Like so many on the left side of politics, I do not want to see this country exporting its industries to China, all in the name of saving the planet, when the increase, increase alone in China's emissions last year, just the increase, well, that was greater than the whole of our total emissions. For the Energy Minister Angus Taylor, his immediate challenge is ensuring that we don't lose ever more of our coal-fired and gas-fired power stations like Liddell and the power stations of the Latrobe Valley because if we do, the power supply this summer will be even more precarious. And he's got to start telling the power retailers, the generators, the regulators that he's the minister. He's in charge and they dance to his tune, not the other way around. While so much of our political class is focused on symbolic issues like Indigenous recognition, and while the states seem more interested in things like treaties and state-based emissions targets, more so than keeping essential services like power available 24-7, the Morrison government needs to force the debate back onto the issues that ordinary people care about, the stuff we elect governments to do on our behalf. It just doesn't pass the pub test that a country with so much coal, gas and uranium can have such high power prices doesn't pass the pub test, the country exporting a record tonnage of coal can be so squeamish about using coal here. And while I'm at it, how can a country that has massive floods every year be so short of water for farming and in many areas, in drought-stricken towns, short of water for personal use? Forget everything else, get the basics right, power and water, and the Prime Minister 
will make himself a hero.